and welcome to the Mythical Ireland Library and Office. This is where it all happens. This is where all the writing gets done. On this desk and on the desk today is a very, very special, I would call it a toy, except for it's not a toy at all. It is a piece of equipment uh, that is very valuable uh, to my writing and that is my recently acquired Adler Special Typewriter. Uh, now I will uh, tell you a little bit about the typewriter and I'm going to uh, hopefully do a little bit of typing on it as well. I acquired it in early February. At that time I shared an unboxing video of the typewriter with uh, Mythical Ireland patrons over at uh, patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. And I've had an opportunity to put it through its paces. It joins two other typewriters in my collection. I have a brother AX230, uh, which is a, a, an electronic typewriter, which I have been using to write the companion volume to return to Segish. Again, uh, uh, Mythical Ireland patrons will have uh, seen the script from that uh, as I've been writing it. Uh, and also my 1959 Olympia SM4, which is or has been uh, used almost daily here. Um, anyway, so I suppose uh, the question, and I, I think I have addressed this previously, but I wanted to sort of reiterate. Pe people might say, "What? why are you using a typewriter? 60 plus year old technology in the era of computers. Now, I... Uh, use computers every day in my work, in my day job. I'm a sub-editor and a graphic designer for a couple of national newspapers and uh, I've written a lot of my books on computers. I learned to type uh, as a child on a typewriter, my father's uh, red uh, Olivetti Valentine typewriter. So f first of all, one of the reasons I use typewriters is because I f find... Um, there's a, a sense of nostalgia, but it's more than that. There are several reasons, um, not least the aesthetics. I mean, this is a beautiful looking machine um, and it's a beautiful machine to use. The engineering that went into these things is remarkable. Most of the typewriters built in that era, uh, especially what's called the standard typewriters, the larger typewriters, uh, and the portable ones as well, to an extent, they're built to such an extent that they will literally last a lifetime and in most cases will outlast the writers and the authors and the poets etc who use them. A typewriter leaves a physical imprint on paper of the moment that you create the words. This is something you don't get with a computer. When you type uh, uh, letters on your computer keyboard uh, they're being translated into, into binary code in zeros and ones. In the circuitry of your computer, uh, electrons are passing through that circuitry and the resulting code is uh, saved in a file onto a hard drive or an SSD. But there's no physical imprint. There's no physical impression of the moment that you created those words. Yes, you can press Control P or Command P if you're on a Mac and print that document. But even that is not uh, a, a true record of the moment that you created it. Uh, if you make a mistake on a typewriter, of course, you have to exit out. Or if you want to use Tipex, if you're using white paper, some typewriters, uh, the more recent uh, correctable electronic typewriters, such as the IBM Sel uh, Selectric series and my brother uh, AX230 have a uh, correctable facility where they can lift the ink off the paper brilliant but there's something about the mechanical typewriter that actually forces you to think about what you're writing you're thinking ahead in a way that you're not really thinking with the computer keyboard with the computer keyboard you'll find that the backspace is used quite a lot and the uh, cursor cursor keys you're moving back through the text to make uh, 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 amendments emendations corrections you're deleting words you're going back with the typewriter you have to think more carefully I have actually fi found typewriters very conducive to my written work. Now, this is uh, uh, counterintuitive to an extent because you would think, well, there's a heavy mechanical action involved. And if you make a mistake, your resulting typescript has X'd out words in it or X'd out letters. I, I can live with that. I really can. Um, 
and then you you might say well well okay you have a you have a, a a page of TypeScript. What do you do then? Well, thankfully, thanks to modern technology, you can use a, a an app on your smartphone to literally take a photograph of that page and to convert it to digital text using optical character recognition uh, software or a, an app. Uh, and some of those apps are free. So with an OCR app, you take a picture of your your TypeScript and you email it to yourself where you put pay and where you can paste it into a, a Microsoft Word document or whatever software you're using. So you you have the original script but you also have the edited version and the version that you can work with then uh, you know to use for your your uh, your files for your digital uh, publication your you know to eventually create uh, the finished uh, product so to speak. Anyway the Adler uh, that's on my desk is an Adler special in two tones. It's a sort of a creamy, sort of off-white and a sort of a grey. I really love the colour scheme of this typewriter. It came in different colour schemes. In fact, uh, if you look at the typewriter database, uh, which is typewriterdatabase.com, you'll see that there were several iterations of the special. The first one was released in 1953. Uh, an updated model was released in 1957 and another in 1958. Uh, several maybe in 1958 uh, the last in the series uh, seems to have been produced in 1970 so there were several iterations of it uh, thankfully all typewriters have a serial number that's engraved into them I was able to find out uh, by looking at the serial number which is 2195575 uh, that this is in fact a 1958 Adler special what are the features of the typewriter well, uh, it's a standard, as I said, so it's one of the desktop-based models. It's big and heavy, and it's not the sort of thing that you carry around in a briefcase or in a, a case like a lot of the portable typewriters were designed to do. This was designed to be mounted permanently on a desk. Uh, it's, it's big and heavy. That makes it very solid. That makes it feel like a real proper machine. Carriage return, and uh, you know, they can move the, the carriage left and right and you can see that it's it's got a uh, you, you wouldn't want to be standing in the way of that you know <laughs> you get a bit of a bump off it. the tab the tab key here on the bottom right you can tabulate across now i should explain you might see this piece of card here the paper support uh, i don't know if you call it a mechanism is missing from this type where there are screws and there is a slot where obviously a paper support came out for the moment I'm just using a piece of stiff card to support the paper to make sure it doesn't lag down behind the typewriter and get caught in things behind um yes it wasn't without its flaws it's still in very very good condition you'll see here you know for instance there are a couple of nicks in the paintwork it's not I mean uh, given that it is what 62 years old it's not doing bad at all I love the fact that the cover just literally pops off with just one bit of a tug um, when I got it you'll see that there's still a bit of grime in places it's still a bit dirty that's not going to affect the mechanism of it uh, the type bars and type slugs were in good condition uh, I did flush out the segment and there was dust and grime uh, in the linkages below which I had to clean out but by and large it was in what I would call very good condition not super uh, not uh, what's it called um uh, not superb condition by any means, not pristine, uh, but still uh, works very well. The paper bale is uh, metal with the plastic rollers on it, very solid feel to that. There is a paper, um, I think, the, is that a paper insertion guide? I don't know. You just line your paper up against that. And there's a detent there that it just clicks into place. Um, your line selection, you have a single spacing line and a half two line spaces two and a half and three so you have quite a range of options on that i think i'll leave it at line and a half for today you have a color selector if you have a two-tone ribbon which i do so if you leave it on let me just check yeah, yeah yeah if you leave it on well blue or black it uses the top part of the ribbon and if you click it down to the bottom it uses the bottom part of the ribbon which is red and there's also a stencil setting which avoids using the ribbon at all i don't know why typewriters had a stencil selection on them i don't know why people would would do that type without actually producing without putting ink onto paper but anyway 
Again, I love the fact that the keys are in the same two tones. Most of them are that sort of off-white and then some of them are the grey. I love that. Um, there's a, um, a tabulator cancel and a margin cancel button here. There's a switch here for adding uh, margins and tabs. So you put the typewriter to get your, say, left margin. You put the typewriter where you want it and you click this forward. Sorry, I, that's out of shot there. Hang on, please. You might even be able to see it, but uh, it's this switch here. So you click it forward to set your margin, but you click it back to set your tab. So you can set regular tabs. I think I only have one tab set, which is there. Um, and then you can cancel them using those two, those two buttons. There's a margin release button on, on the right. So if you hear the bell and you reach the end of the line, but you've only one or two letters left in your word, you can hit the margin release and type those extra couple of letters before returning the carriage. Um, yeah, lovely, solid feel. The platen is in what I would call very good condition. It's not pitted or cracked or anything like that. It's not too hard. Uh, although I will still use a, a a backing page. There's a ruler guide here where you can insert a pencil and create a line or a pen. You know, you can put your pen in there and basically tab across uh, and uh, place a horizontal line on your page if if you need to. Uh, just wondered, are there any other feet? There is a carriage release lever on both sides so you can release the, the carriage on either side, uh, which is... Uh, very handy how does this compare to the olympia sm4 it's heavier in action it's it requires more uh, physicality uh, the type face is different uh, it's a sm very a slight, a slightly smaller typeface to the um uh, to the uh, sm4 um look some people you know are fussy about the, about those things the main thing is is that does it leave a good clean typescript and it does uh, however the biggest difference in that regard is that it's easier with the sm4 uh, it's it, it takes less physical action uh, and and i do find there are times when um you know after a prolonged period of typing where i might feel that feel the effects of it of course the shift uh, keys are on both sides and the shift lock um, they're almost universally placed this is of course a qwerty typewriter and it's a british typewriter because it's got the pound sign instead of the dollar sign so just be aware if you are purchasing a typewriter uh, for instance if you're in france i think you, you might be used to the azerty typewriter with a and z there um, and then there's the quartz Q W E R T Z, where the Z is there, and I think the Y is there. Just make sure it's the QWERTY typewriter. If you're used to using a QWERTY typewriter, that is, uh, make sure that you're getting uh, a QWERTY typewriter. Otherwise, you will find that you will be confused as to where certain keys are. It also has fractions, which is, uh, you know, I mean, look, let's be honest. Some of these keys are obsolete. There's one quarters, three quarters, one eighth, three eighths, one third, two thirds, five eighths, seven eighths. There's there's a one half. Okay, there is uh, an at symbol, uh, which is convenient, uh, you know, for email addresses if you're typing email addresses. There's no hash key, and as is the case on many of the typewriters of this era, there is actually no one. So you use a lowercase l for a one. However, there is a zero, thankfully. Uh, so you don't have to use a capital, uh, capital O for your zeros. That's convenient. One thing that's a little bit confusing about the Adler Special is that the open bracket and close bracket are not side by side as they are on many other typewriters. They're actually above the nine and above the hyphen. So quite often I have found when I go to close the bracket, I type uh, shift zero, which results in uh, a question mark uh, appearing on the page instead of the close bracket. That's something I just have to pay attention to. Anyway, let's do a uh, type test. Not sure what I'm going to type yet, but anyway, we'll type some, perhaps type something meaningful or perhaps type some gibberish. I'm typing on creamy paper, but I've a backing page and, and uh, the uh, uh, platen release is there so that you can line up your paper properly. 
<laughs> bit of dust on that and we blow that off and we can we can start our type test so as it is Easter Sunday we'll say happy Easter Um, something else that uh, was a little bit off on this machine was that uh, when I got it, uh, the alignment of the capital letters wasn't uh, ex uh, precise uh, and I had to realign those by adjusting uh, the nuts here. Uh, I think I've managed to get it reasonably accurate. You might be a perfectionist in these regards. You'll sometimes find that some of the letters are misaligned uh, vertically. Uh, that can be annoying, I have to say. I'd be fairly fussy about that sort of thing. I would prefer if they were if they were well aligned, you know. I just think about the numbers there. Oh, backspace. I have the old cup of tea here as well, a cup of chamomile tea. And I've, I've, I've gotten to the end and I need two more letters, so margin release. I need to put a hyphen in there.
Press the H there. Sometimes I find when you type two letters quickly, it skips. I think it's because the um, the type bar is just not quick enough coming back. Uh, sometimes it's basically it's more to do with my uh, method of typing than it is to do with a, f a flaw in the machine. happened again obviously one thing about using typewriters I, I don't have enough knowledge of the typewriters that are available but when you're typing in Irish uh, for instance I've just typed Brew Nabonia there and there's no father on the U or and no father on the O because there's no father available on the keyboard so I would often just uh, pencil those in directly onto the onto the page. I know, it's like uh, all you have to do is is hold Alt G on your computer keyboard and type a vowel, and you get the father on it. So obviously, from that point of view, it is definitely more convenient to use a typewriter. But these things can be added later if you have a long article in which, say, the the words Brunabonia appear regularly. You can do a find and replace. It's not. It's not difficult. This uh, TypeScript has to be, as I said, captured digitally and put onto the computer. Uh, and, and I would always have to do some proofreading and editing at that stage. That's another advantage of using a typewriter is that, you know, automatically when you import the text digitally, uh, there's a process by which you have to do some editing and proofreading. So it kind of forces you to... Uh, uh, it 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 forces you to uh, to 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 copy edit. Um, should be doing it anyway, but you absolutely have to do it. I'm just uh, writing here about the fact that it's raining today for the first time in a while, and uh, we've had a kind of a series of dry periods which have revealed a lot in uh, crop marks around the area. You know. Yep, I hit that margin release there. Oh, missed one. It'll be interesting to play this back and have a look at where it misses and why it's happening, you know. Oh, mistake. First mistake. That's not bad. Uh, what are there? 15 lines of text, one mistake. That's all right. Zero is there, Anthony. You don't need to use a capital O. No, oh, I'm after. I hit the the half instead of the full stop there. That was a bad mistake. Anyway, that's part of the process, you know.
again. I've typed Brune and Bonia again, so I'll just add in with the pencil. It's kind of a nice touch, you know, but you're adding. It's like this, this is a unique uh, uh, piece of script. It may end up becoming a blog post or something, um, but I have the original. You know, I actually have the original, the moment of, of creation, as it were, recorded. I'm going to pull this off for a couple of minutes. You can watch the action of the type bars a bit better uh, while I continue uh, to type. bad Anthony I didn't think that through I just used the word severe and severely in the same sentence this is a bugbear for uh, well I would say for experienced writers you know that you you try not to use any repetition in a sentence you try not to use the same word twice you try to use a, 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 an alternative anyway uh, that will be caught at the editing and proofreading the OCR stage when I'm importing it to the computer I'll find another word you know skipped one there it's not that I skipped it I think I tried to type too quickly actually missed the E that time. space there. I have two words running into each other there. Considerable costs because I missed the space. I don't have 100% uh, fine motor skills. Uh, I have a slight lack of dexterity uh, in my fingers uh, which manifests itself in my handwriting which is not terribly neat uh, and I do find especially with my smaller digits that I have less precise action with them so the result is that I would often um, uh, mistype um, typewriter actually helps that the keyboard is just a tap of, of plastic keys whereas the typewriter demands a heavier action you're actually helping with uh, you know to develop the strength and accuracy of your fingers uh, when you, when you use a typewriter And you can hear the click when it gets to the margin. You hear the bell, then five or six characters later, you hear the click, and that means you're jammed. You can't go any further until you press uh, the margin release.
excuse me. there. Um, in terms of the amount of type that you get uh, at line and a half spacing I find that if you fill an A4 page now I have the margins quite wide you know that well I mean narrow They're, I fill out the width of the, the the paper I get something in the region of between 400 and 450 words per page so you know obviously Microsoft Word for instance gives you an updated word count uh, so you can see how many words you've typed but you can still get a good estimate um, and uh, one of the advantages of using a typewriter is you can set a target you say right okay this evening I'm perhaps a little bit tired and I'm, I know I'm not going to be I'm not going to have the endurance to type for too long you might say I'm going to write one page or maybe you'd set your target higher I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write two pages or three pages of script or it could reduce the line spacing to single spacing and decide you're just going to write one page but you'll have more words you'll have maybe five 550 words something along those lines um anyway i'm, I'm just i'm not i'm just writing uh, i'm writing about drones and crop marks um because it's a, a, a topical uh, item at the moment One thing that I'm lacking on the Adler uh, because the paper support is missing on the Olympia there's a an extendable paper support that's graded uh, and I know exactly where to set it such that when the paper reaches the top of the guide it means you've reached the end of the page I'm not sure if I've enough space at the end of the page now uh, to type the last few words of, of this piece I'm going to try anyway I have there you go oh just about <laughs> just about look at that <laughs> uh, you, you can if you want to uh, you can you can pause that and uh, and read that <laughs> that's a fairly clean page of typescript I think you'll agree made my I think that was where I made the first mistake in the word feature it wasn't too bad uh, I made a, another, another one here where I typed a U instead of an I in discoveries but again I find that instead of Xing out both the D and, and the U it was just better to, to go back and type an I because you can still you, you know what the word is yeah the OCR will, will be confused the OCR will put a, a, a character in here other than an I or a U or maybe it'll put both again it's just a matter of tidying them up I think that's uh, a very respectable result and you'll see 
the instances of Bruno Bonio where I've added uh, my my feathers with the with the pencil. Anyway, that is uh, the Adler special, which you'll agree. Uh, by the way, the uh, the the cover is padded, uh, and of course the reason it's padded. I'm not exactly sure what that material is, whether it is. Uh, Uh, synthetic or whether it's natural uh, fiber uh, but the, the reason it's uh, it's padded is to prevent the metal case of the typewriter from ringing and making noise when the typewriter is in action now i hope you've enjoyed that that is a short introduction to the adler special from 1958 uh, one of uh, three typewriters uh, i would love truly to collect typewriters and I probably will to be honest uh, the only issue uh, the only the, well, the major issue uh, is uh, that you know you just don't have the space to uh, to have them lying around the place uh, this doesn't have a case uh, so uh, obviously if you buy a standard typewriter that doesn't have a case you have to find something uh, to act as a, a dust cover because I find when you leave it lying around it's not in use for a week or so it does you know you get dust and hairs and stuff building up on it anyway that's the adler special hope you've enjoyed this uh, short video from the library and uh, i'll see you all soon on one of the live streams hopefully